I am so glad you convinced me that the family car should be the Defender 110. It is so beautiful inside. It's so comfortable, and it just feels indestructible. Yes, it really is. I've been waiting a long time for the new model to come out. The Defender 110, I'm telling you, it's my favorite car of all times. It's my third one. You know, I have stories of going off-road. The guy managed the group. He was like, what are you doing in this beautiful car? I'm like, I'm going off-road. He's like, are you sure? Because you can use one of ours, and then they look like Mad Max cars. I'm like, no, 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 no. we're going to do this, and he was shocked. Wow. Well, it's great because the Defender has been reimagined for 21st century adventure and its unparalleled off-road ability as well as its robust interior are invaluable whether you're headed towards uncharted territory or just a weekend of exploration. The Defender 110 tackles challenging surroundings with absolute confidence. The SUV conveys strength outside and in, featuring peerless technology like an intuitive driver display and an award-winning infotainment system. That's my favorite part, to keep you connected no matter where the journey takes you. Adventure is unique to everyone, and so is the Defender. Choose from the two-door Defender 90, the four-door Defender 110, or the larger Defender 130 with the ability to seat up to eight passengers. You'll find uncompromising performance in all three. So pack up and go even further with the Defender 110. Learn more at LandRoverUSA.com forward slash Defender. These days, we're all investors. Trying to be smart with our money despite our worst impulses. But at iShares, we believe that deep down inside of every investor is a better investor. One that's just waiting to be let out. Explore iShares ETFs and insights and let your best investor out. Visit iShares.com for more information. This isn't your average business podcast, and he's not your average host. This is the James Altucher Show on the Choose Yourself Network. Today on the James Altucher Show. Suddenly the song was number one the first day. I, the day of the release, it was number one in 14 countries. Let's say I want to write a song that gets 4 billion views. Mm -hmm. What should my first few steps be? You know what? I don't think about the numbers. The main thing is for you to connect with the world. The more I travel, the more I understand the human being. Mm -hmm. I see life with the eyes of a child. Humans start to complicate things like, let's study the song, what happened? And they did this and that. It was so organic. It came out so easily. I mean, everyone has their own talent. And my talent is expressing it through writing songs and from singing them, you know? Oh my gosh. Special thanks to our sponsors today. The Power of Moments, Chip and Dan Heath, the New York Times bestselling authors of some of my favorite books, Switch and Made to Stick, return with a groundbreaking new book, The Power of Moments. The Power of Moments explores why certain brief experiences, and you know what I'm talking about, can jolt us and elevate us and change us, and how we can learn to create such extraordinary moments in our life and work. To download the first chapter of the book for free, visit thepowerofmoments.com slash James. I am so grateful to have Athletic Greens as a sponsor of today's episode. This episode of the James Altucher Show is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I started using Athletic Greens, I don't know, about a year ago or so because it's the most complete supplement available and nutrition is really important to me. Athletic Greens has 75 ingredients all working together to help with 11 different areas of health. My big problem was I didn't know how to get all of those ingredients in one package. Athletic Greens solves this problem for me. If you're like me, you want to be confident in the way you take care of yourself. You want to know you have all the right prebiotics and probiotics for digestion, as well as adaptogens for stress and hormone support. Getting into a daily routine with Athletic Greens is the single best thing I do for my health and really for all my success this whole year. I've asked Athletic Greens for a special deal for my listeners. You can receive a whole 30% off your first purchase. Simply go to athleticgreens.com slash James to claim this special offer. 
That's athleticgreens.com slash James. I can't stress this enough. Do yourself a favor and jump over to athleticgreens.com slash James and subscribe today. You may, actually you probably have heard of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. I call them choose yourself currencies because they don't depend on any institutions to function and they're simply exploding in price right now. Some have jumped as high as 3,000%, 21,000%, and even a rare 81,000%. If you're missing out on this boom, don't worry, you're not alone. Most people are not investing in crypto simply because they don't even know how to get started. So I decided to do something about that. I wanna help listeners like you get started in this booming market. So I'm offering a free six video series masterclass on cryptocurrencies, all for free. I'll walk you step-by-step step through the entire process. If you're interested in claiming this free masterclass, please go to altature.io, that's altature.io slash masterclass, where you'll find all of the details. So excited to have Erica Ender with me. Before I actually say what she does, just in case you don't know her name, hello, Erica. Hello. I've already asked you on a date and potentially asked you to marry me <laughs> at the beginning of this podcast, but that's not the reason you're on. We're the talking serious. We got to say you're carrying a you're carrying, yeah, carrying a, a, an engagement ring an on engagement me. Engagement ring. But the reason you're on is you've written the most popular song in YouTube history, Despacito. Yeah. Uh, four billion, almost four billion downloads. Crazy. Uh, it's crazy. Was the was it the first to hit one billion downloads ever, or the first to hit two billion downloads? No, I think three billion, right? First to hit three billion downloads. Yeah, and I think that we've done it uh, the fastest. That's what I heard. Right. You, I think mm -hmm. it took you like, oh, ninety-seven days to hit a billion. I don't know how long it took to hit three billion. I, I don't really know, you know. I haven't been, you know, checking the numbers. I'm just letting everything flow, and I'm just happy every every time I hear a, a good news, you know. And and that that's great to celebrate the success because you've already been for many years super successful. You you recently won a, a Latin Grammy. You have many hits all over the place. You've written for what 160 different songwriters. You're in every market in the world. Uh, you're 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 already a success, but. Um, and before we get to the kind of arc of your career, I am just insanely curious to hit almost 4 billion YouTube downloads. Like just what that no one's ever done that in the history of anything like to have 4 billion or not people, but billions of people listen to it's your half music. Of the planet almost. Yeah. 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 Half the planet yeah. has heard some, a work of art you've created. Mm -hmm. Like how has your life changed both personally? And I have to say, even financially from, from this significant <laughs> thing, it's like well, a world first, history thing. I gotta say that I, I cannot take the whole credit because it's a, a dream team. Sure. Uh, first, I wrote the song with uh, Luis Fonsi, which is my dear friend. And um, he came to you with his um, the initial me. refrain. Yeah, he came to me with the idea that he had. Normally, when you sit down to write a song with with a co writer, you come with an idea and you start developing that idea. In that case, in that day, which was September fifteenth, two thousand fifteen, when we created the song. He calls me like, Erica, do you want to pass by? I want to start writing for my new material, my new CD. So I went to his house. We started chatting and then uh, we went to his home studio and he tells me, you know what? I have this idea since this morning and he sings to me with the guitar. Despacito, vamos a hacerlo en una playa en Puerto Rico. And then I answered, hasta que la sola griten hay bendito. <laughs> well, what does it mean? <laughs> until the... Until the um, the waves uh, cry, uh, um, shuts out, uh, ay bendito. That's a saying in Puerto Rico. Did it just like hit oh you? Oh my God. No, it's like, oh my oh. God. Something like that. And then um, he started laughing and me too. And then I said, I love it. I love it. Let's write a song about how to seduce a woman or a man. Um, I mean, if, if, if um, it's the case. And uh, why don't we just uh, try to do it in a very classy way? But with what's going on out there, because he, he used to be a, a balladist, right? He used to sing a lot of ballads and pop music. And right now, all of um, the, the Latin music is mainly urban, urban. Uh, and it's mixed with pop and other rhythms, but mainly urban. And that seems so, to be the new 
pop music actually is a mixture exactly. of that uh, Latin sound with urban. Exactly. And, and I think it not that you were in the right place at the right time, but when you mix kind of just his his Latin style with urban, and then you have Daddy Yankee doing kind of reggaeton or almost mm-hmm, rap, mm-hmm. Uh, I think it it made the song something unique. There are a lot of artists collaborating nowadays. Like everyone, everybody's doing that in the Latin market. So it was Fonsi's idea to call uh, Daddy Yankee. Then Daddy Yankee added the rap and the the post chorus, which is pasito pasito, which mm. is genius, right? Yeah. And um, I don't know, the very first day that the song came out, which was uh, January was 17th? January, no, 13th. January 13th? Yeah, f- a Friday 13th. Can you imagine? Bad luck. It was no good luck. <laughs> very good luck. Um, it uh, maybe I mean, in the maybe in South America because it's the reverse of here. No, 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 no. It's the same. Oh, okay. But I'm telling you, for me, it was good luck. <laughs> yes. I don't believe in those things. I'm not superstitious I don't at all. I, I believe in miracles and in and a big energy and in good vibes and everything. So the thing is that suddenly the song was number one the first day, I, the day of the release. It was number one in 14 countries. Wow. And then. Uh, at Why the end do you of the think? Day, like just it just connected with the world. I don't know. I the, don't have an explanation. I I I see life with the eyes of a child. So so I the mean, words connect. You think or the or everything combined. I think everything combined. When it, I think that planets align as well. I mean, there's a story behind this pasito, as you were saying. I have a big story. Fonsi has a big story. We're warriors, you know. We've been in this industry for a long time. We love what we do. We were two friends in a very organic way, writing a song from our hearts. That was it. And and people start, you know, humans start to complicate things like, let's study the song. What happened? And they did this and that. It was so organic. It came out so easily. We started writing it like around 3 p.m. and we ended, I I left his house around 6. We even did a Facebook Live while writing the song. Oh, you're kidding. I haven't seen that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I didn't show the song at at that point, but I was just saying, you know, we have a palo here, like we got a hit. And that's how we say it. And How uh, could you tell? How did you know that it was going to be a hit? You feel it. You feel it when you've been for so long in this industry and you know the technique and you know um, to you know how to write a contagious uh, melody and you take care of the lyrics and everything. We did it with responsibility, with professionalism. But at the same time, we did it with our hearts and trying to get out of his comfort zone because he was a balladist, as I was telling you. So this was a risk for him. This well, was what such was, a what challenge. Pa- what part was out of his comfort zone? I mean, yes, maybe the rap I mean, no, th- this is part of his comfort zone because he's, he's from Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's natural to him. The thing is what uh, is how the audience had the perception of him. You get me? Mm-hmm. So it was taking him out of the comfort zone of the audience. And it's it's kind of risky when you see, um, a, I don't know, a performer that you used to see in, in a certain genre and then he changes radically, and that's what happened. So it was kind of a risk, but it, I think that since it's so natural and so authentic and uh, for him, it was it was easy to. I, I mean, it connected with everyone as so, fast as it could. So once, well, and I and I want to get to many of the things you just said, but once it connected, and once you realize, oh my gosh, this is like the biggest sensation on YouTube ever. Not just a sensation on YouTube, it's the biggest ever. Mm-hmm. What personally, did what, did something change for you or what? how did that feel? I just want to know just for my own curiosity. You know what? Um, I think that I have to give a lot of credit to my mom and my dad. They always told me, you have a talent and you have to be um, as humble as you can. You have to use your talent to do good. You have to be responsible. And every time I sit down to write a song, I feel like I'm writing someone else's soundtrack. I mean, the, the soundtrack of someone else's life because you know that music marks moments of our lives. So I've taken this very natural. I'm in such a grateful mode. Uh, but at the same time, I'm so... I, I mean, I'm embracing my roots. And I always say in Spanish, there's a saying that I invented, that the tallest your branches are, the more profound you have to have your roots. And that's how I'm seeing this. I'm taking this from gratefulness, not from ego. I have a foundation in Panama where I have all my energy right now. Like, like I'm using this spot to, to grow as a professional because I'm working, as I told you, three different markets at the same time and I'm riding the wave. But at the same time, I'm taking this spotlight in order to empower others, in order to uh, try to make them conscious 
of having a talent and doing and uh, using it as a vehicle to do good. And I use music as a vehicle to do good. So so let's explore that. So you 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 have at an early age you realize you had this talent for for music and for mm-hmm. songwriting, but you've also said in the past that a lot of your a lot of songwriting is a way to translate, let's say, pain into song into art. People's feelings. But what what pain from yourself, from your mm-hmm, own, mm-hmm. and and like you said, you you're now you set up in two thousand nine a charity to help uh, children who had been in forced child labor and 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 give them the arts and bring them bring them up. But what was your pain in the beginning in your childhood that then got translated into song? No, no, no. I didn't have pain in my childhood. I had a lot of values. I had that seed because of my parents. There is such a we're such a united family. Uh, my mom is such a spiritual person. My dad is the kindest person I've ever known. I, I got lucky. I got really lucky. And when I was do, little, do, do you think a lot of artists? Um, I think that's rare for artists because I feel like a lot of artists do have something they've kind of been, you know, Painful? almost rebelling from and then no, to create their not art. Not in my case. Really? I was so conscious about my, uh, well, the normal things you got like bullying and uh, at the school because people would. Uh, would call me uh, microphone or mop because of my curly hair and things like that, but nothing, nothing bad at all. That that was nothing. Um, I I grew up with a responsibility. My mom always told me since she knew that she wouldn't control me when I grew up because I was since I was little. I remember watching TV with her and seeing how Gloria Estefan and Emilio Estefan was taking out the whole world with conga, and I would say to her, you know what? Whenever I grew grow up grow up when i whenever i grow up i want to be like uh, like her i mean i want to be myself but I, if she could do it i can do it so she was a motivation for me she, it, it was so inspirational in in in, in what way like in cuz she's been a singer like, performer no like writer. i, I want to do that like i can do that i i think i have the talent to do that and i can evolve until i do that i saw them doing the crossover it w- it was a dream for me but it's not the dream of being famous or being a millionaire it's the dream of connecting with the world Sure, and I think probably a greater pleasure than, of course, everybody needs to make money to pay the bills, but probably a greater pleasure out of this seeing your song hit 4 billion views and even earlier than that, all your successes must be the way you're, you see how your art connects to people. But mm-hmm. how did you, given that you had talent at the beginning and you recognize that, how did you then proceed to develop the skills? Because mm-hmm. then it's hard work after you've recognized the talent. Of course, a lot of hard work. Being a woman, even worse. Being a young woman, even worse. Well, and I remember one story you've said where you had to change your name to E Ender. A couple of times so, I did. So people yes. wouldn't know that it yes. was a woman writing the song. When I, I didn't got know it was here, so... yeah, when I got here, I used to send the songs sung by me, even if it, there were male songs. And I would send them out, and then they would tell me, you know what, it's a beautiful song, but it's too feminine. I was like, are you kidding me? And then I tried all the paths I could, you know. Then I said, you know what, I'm going to try this. I'm going to put Erica Ender, I mean E. Ender, I'm going to ask for a male singer to sing it, and I'm going to send it to someone else. Mm. And I did that, and the song went through. So it wasn't a thing of writing a song for a male. It was the vision, the lack of vision of the person who was receiving the material in order to think that a woman couldn't write for a man, you know. So so I know this is only... A, a few minutes, but how do you think about if someone's just beginning songwriting? What should they think about? Like, what's what is a song? And I know this is like a naive question. Uh-huh. I kind of want to know. You know what? There are two ways of well, in my case, that's how I see it. There are two ways of writing a song. The inspirational one. I mean, the one that comes out from the muse, from the inspiration. Like you're going through something and you t- you need to express yourself, or just an idea that comes out of nowhere. You know. But I feel like if I was expressing myself, I would just cry. I wouldn't necessarily write a song. Well, how do you do it? Maybe you you would do a podcast and you would express yourself. Each one, I mean, everyone has their own talent, and my talent is writing song. I mean, expressing it through uh, writing songs and from singing them. You know, you come up with a premise, then like something you want to express, something that's inspirational to you, or something that's happened, or something that you see that affects you. So there's some premise, and then what do you do? Well, I was telling you, I have two ways of saying it. When it, when the muse comes, I can I can be like washing my teeth and then an idea comes to my mind. I can be driving my car, an idea comes to my mind because I saw something, for example. But then when I sit down in the studio and I look for that inspiration, that's the second way of writing a song. So I go back to whatever happened to me or, or I go to a title or an idea that I want to develop, you know, 
It depends. For example, if you tell me, Erica, I need a song for Ricky Martin right now. I would like to know, me as an as an uh, as a as a songwriter, I would like to know what's going on in his life right now. That's me. Not everyone does it that way. I know the way he sings, the range of his voice, the way that he expresses himself, because my duty is to write exactly what would make him feel comfortable. Mm. Right? That's my duty as a songwriter. My duty as a singer-songwriter is to express whatever I'm feeling, you know? So I never had a conflict writing for others and writing for myself. So that's what I'm telling you. You either have whatever comes out of nowhere and whatever you look for. Let's stop to take a quick break. We'll be right back. I want to tell you about a new book made by two buddies of mine, Chip and Dan Heath, the New York Times bestselling authors of some of my favorite books, Switch and Made to Stick. And now they've got a new book, which is exciting me more than ever, The Power of Moments. The Power of Moments explores why certain brief experiences can jolt us and elevate us and change us and how we can learn to create such extraordinary moments in our life and work. Research and psychology teaches us that our memories are not like films that we can simply rewind and watch from beginning to end. They're more like snapshots or snippets, fragments. And we cling to particular minutes or hours that rise above the surrounding weeks and months, tending to remember only the best, worst, or last moment of an experience which means because those are the three moments of an experience you remember that these defining moments in our lives are often just the result of accident. So why leave our most meaningful moments to chance when we can actually create them? You can actually create power in a moment. What if a manager, for instance, knew exactly how to turn an employee's moment of failure into a moment of growth? What if you could create memories that matter for your children or your loved ones? To download the first chapter of the book for free, visit thepowerofmoments.com slash James. That's thepowerofmoments.com slash James. Anyone who has read any of my readings knows that I believe this 100%. Health is the most important investment you can make in yourself. If you're sick in bed, you're not going to be creative you're not going to be able to create the financial success that you want to create. I know I do my best, even though my diet isn't totally perfect. But if I just take one scoop of athletic greens, when I wake up in the morning, I know I have all my bases covered. It is quick, easy, and it tastes great. I've tried other supplements. I've even had a lot of experts in health on this podcast. And I've learned athletic greens is really the quickest easiest and most complete supplement available. So I asked myself, why go with anything else? It is everything from prebiotics and probiotics, which I use for digestion, as well as adaptogens for stress and hormone support. Everything I need to ensure my body and mind is in top shape every single day. And of course, this product isn't just for athletes because I am not an athlete, that's for sure. It is for anyone who wants to be on top of their game. Success is about consistency. Being healthy is about doing what's healthy. Taking Athletic Greens each day is the highest leverage thing I can do for my health. Here's the best part, though. I called them up, and I've asked them not only to sponsor this podcast, but to arrange a special deal for you listeners. You can receive a whopping 30% off of your first purchase. Simply go to athleticgreens.com slash James to claim this special offer. That's athleticgreens.com slash James. I can tell you for me, getting into a daily routine with Athletic Greens is the single best thing I've done for my health and success this year. I cannot stress this enough. Give it a try today. Just do yourself a favor. Take out your phone and head over to athleticgreens.com slash James and subscribe today. I feel like that comes out of nowhere. Like that's something you have to tease a little bit like you have to dip, that's an ability no 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 to me it was completely natural since i was since i was a little girl i was completely i don't know if you can say that word in uh, that word in english but empiric can you say that in uh, spanish you say empirico like it's it's natural mm. completely natural i mean to me 
I never had to look for an instrument to start writing songs. I went to the instrument whenever I needed to grow, you know? But I, I, the songs just started in my mind. I just started putting melodies and, and uh, lyrics together. And I think that was a, a gift. And so when Luis came to you, and he's known for going to female songwriters. Yeah. He's, he has said in interviews he likes to find that balance. He's a gentleman and he likes to, you know, find that balance and, and, and be good to women. Yeah. And, and, and for you, Despacito, obviously it means slowly. And so you kind of wanted to say, okay, let's... Take it slow. Yeah, take it slow. <laughs> and, uh, and and the whole song's a dance, basically, of a guy taking trying it to slow. Seduce, or, uh, trying se to seduce a woman slowly. Yes. And that's how we like to be seduced. I mean, I, I, I'm talking about myself and I think the majority of women. And we like to be treated with, uh, I mean, in a delicate way, you know? I mean, we have our wild side as well, but um, we don't like to be treated as... I shouldn't say that word, <laughs> but um, reggaeton always or, or the majority of the time is very aggressive. It, it puts a woman as an object. And I think a woman is a work of art as well as a man. So I was, we were taking care of that, you know, in order to have um, a beat of what was, what's going on right now, but not falling into that same routine of uh, attacking women or putting them in sort of a, a, a um, how would you say that, a dirty place and um, trying to be classy, talking about sex because we're, we're all here because our, our dad and our mom had sex, but it's the way you say the message what makes a difference. And so how involved, in terms of the songwriting, are you planning also in your mind that the production, how it's going to be produced, how every, well, all the pieces are going case, to fit together? We had the idea of what we wanted. We knew we wanted a, fuse, a, a, a reggaeton kind of in a fusion between uh, urban and pop. But at the same time, he had the clear idea in, in, on his mind of what he wanted. He looked for the producers. That's his credit. He was the one who called Daddy Yankee in order to do a collaboration. And he, we went through like five different arrangements until we got the right one. But it was Fonsi in the studio producing with the two producers, Andres and Mauricio. And then, um, again, as it gets bigger, do you ever, and again, if you had... 20 years of enormous successes. But uh, now do you ever feel like, okay, how am I going to top this? Like half half the planet listen to it. Everyone asks me that. And oh, I, have, I tried to I ask have, no, 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 no. You are original. Yeah. Just, just look at yourself. <laughs> we're, Thank you. we're hair cousins right, to the right. ones that <laughs> can't see us. But this is such a good conversation. I feel like it's I know, definitely we can, we can keep going. <laughs> but the thing is that um, people are always asking me, not the same way you did, but kind of like, do you feel pressure? What are you going to do next? And I'm like, you know what? Planet's just aligned. Everything is flowing. This is such a gift um, among everything that is happening to me right now with the uh, being the youngest uh, uh, ind an inductee in, uh, to the uh, Latin Ho Songwriters Hall of Fame, uh, which I happened before, before Despacito, yeah. the Latin Grammy, my 25th anniversary, the 25th anniversary of my career. So everything is such in a beautiful moment that I'm just focusing in whatever is good and in being um, grateful and, and doing the best that I can in everything that I do, which is what I've done in, during this 25 years. So I'm not putting any pressure because I think doing that is seeing life from the ego eyes. Uh, also, maybe it's a way of viewing life with scarcity instead of abundance. Exactly. Like, oh, I hope I'm only going to have that one You know thing. what I'm seeing? I'm seeing that Erica is starting a new era. Like right now, it, but it does, this, so it does feel like opened, a change. It does feel like a change because I'm 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 having the opportunity to get to the Anglo side and to the Brazilian side, which is amazing for me because I'm half Brazilian and I couldn't get into those markets as big as I'm getting right now, because I was I mean I, my my strongest part was in the Latin market. So I guess that this is a new era. I'm taking it like that. I'm not under pressure at all. I'm just trying to evolve and develop myself the best that I can and be the best person I can and the best professional I can. And whatever comes is amazing. And this kind of things doesn't happen often. So I'm not thinking I'm going to top this. I think I'm thinking I'm going to do quality work and I'm just going to let it flow. Well, okay. So let's say I want to write a song 
that gets 4 billion views. Mm -hmm. what, what should my first few steps be? Obviously, I'm going to listen to all you know your songs what? as an inspiration. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I don't think about the numbers as I was telling you. I think that the, That's fair. the main thing is for you to connect with the world. The more I travel, the more I understand the human being. Mm. And it's amazing how to see that we have the same body, the same heart, the same two eyes, the same nose, the same mouth, but you use that body to, to dance in different rhythms and that same tongue to, to talk in different languages. You know, and at the end, when you understand that and you understand we're part of one whole thing, it's easier to connect. And it's amazing how the world is singing in Spanish. I never thought we were going to do the crossover in Spanish. It never crossed my mind. So it's, it's what I'm telling you. The, the, the world is full of energy and I just let the energy flow. Right, who would have thought that the number one song ever on YouTube is essentially a Spanish song? Yeah, so it's amazing. So, so, so uh, you know, we, we started late, so it's, this is a fast... Faster podcast than I usually do, unfortunately, because there's so much to say. But uh, <laughs> you, I think you hit something with just the title "Despacito," like the slowly and and the way you, you it's so poetic. The 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 lyrics and you know I read the translated version. But uh, how does one take it slowly? Like I'm the type to just go right in for romance. I fall in love at first sight and then get divorced right afterwards. You see, <laughs> so that's the problem. You gotta with take it. your time. You gotta you gotta know who you're who you want to be with. You gotta. I mean, how do you have the confidence in yourself to do that? Loving yourself first, mm -hmm. being happy with yourself. I mean, self esteem is the key. Whenever you're happy with yourself and you communicate the best you can with your inner self, then you can can communicate with others. I think all of this is way. related to having this abundance mentality, not thinking oh, this was my last, or oh no, what am I going to do next? Or, you know, oh, they got inducted and I didn't yet. And I think having an abundance mentality about any, everything. You keep doing the right thing and your time will come. That's and, everything I have to say. And, and a lot of people say, okay, well, she found her talent at a young age. I've been paying the bills and now I'm working in a cubicle. How do I find my talent? I'm in my 40s. How do I find my talent? You know what? There's a, an amazing book that it's is so important to me. I've written I've read uh, I've read it like I don't know four or five times. The Alchemist of love Paolo Coelho. Yeah, love all his books. And it tells you in a certain way that every little child knows what they want to do. Like they have that intuition, you know? And then society starts to change you. Every child comes to this earth without discrimination, sexism, you know, loving everyone, being kind. And society starts changing you and contaminating your heart and your spirit. If you see that, so how do you so how do you free yourself? The, the, you have to connect with your inner child. What's your passion? What is it that you want that you really wanted to do? And why life forced you to do something else? It's never late. Whenever you do find your talent and you understand it that your talent has to have a purpose, and you do it with a mission, not in a selfish way, like I want to be a millionaire, I want to be famous. You can reach success but it would be something that would leave no no um footprint behind to say right. in, a, in a way no mark you so, know so it goes from ta the talent basically has to get rid of these lower ambitions like you know oh i need to be that's how a, i see it a million a views on way. youtube or whatever mm -hmm. and kind of reach something that you feel be sincere about helping people have it action has to follow intention so you have to have the intention of that's how I see it. And I'm telling you this, I'm sharing this because it worked for me. It still works for me, you know? So I think that whenever you put your heart there and whenever you do what you love to do, money will come. As, I, as long as you I do it the right that. way, you're going to enjoy your work. It's, it's not going to feel like you're working. And at the same time, you're going you're gonna to be using the talent that God's given you and in order to do good. People are afraid to take that leap. Because the very first time... It is it is hard. Yes. I'm not going to tell you I haven't suffered a lot. So, the so, beginning of my career was tough. I mean, and, and several times during this path have been very tough. And I've gone through a lot of pain and a lot of doors closed. Oh, well, now you tell me. I wanted to ask you all about yeah. your pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but you were telling me if I had pain when I was little and I didn't. And I, as, as I told you, I got lucky because... I, I had such a solid foundation that helped me go through all of these doors that they closed on my face. So persistence is having faith in you that talent to be and that love. Talent, love. You have to 
persevere as much as you can in what you want. You have to evolve. You have to be open to the world. Understand that the world uh, keeps evolving and, and to decodify all of the languages that you want to go through. You know? So, so, so before we end, I just also want to shout out the the charity that you're doing. We mentioned it before. It's uh, I don't know how to say it. Puertos, Puertas abiertas, abiertas, open doors, open doors for children mm-hmm. who have been going through who who were escaped from child labor. And so, besides that, we all we also did this big uh, festival that is uh, the finale is going to take place. Uh, the finale of this year is going to take place in, in October 29. Uh, and it's um, kind of a, it is a competition with different categories where kids, or not kids, um, they're high school, young people, right? Right before they get, graduate. They're um, competing using their talent and shining on their own talents, but understanding that they have to use that talent with a purpose. That's why it's called talento, which means talent with a purpose, talento con propósito. So they're... Um, activating their their whole school in order to do social labor for a school that is in vulnerable conditions. Mm. And then they get extra points for doing good with their talent. And then at the end, whomever wins the competition, each each of the categories, get a scholarship in order to have their whole college covered within Panama or abroad. So it's kind of a transforming experience. And that's what I that's what I want to do. That's my real mission. Like using music as the the catch in order to do all of that. Well, congratulations on all this success. Thank you. Next time in your New York, in, you're in New York when you've had six billion views on YouTube, <laughs> you'll come on again and we'll, we'll I want to hear all about pain and suffering. <laughs> and But in the meantime, keep enjoying. Thank Don't you. experience any more pain and suffering and but keep well, staying Well, if you want to listen to some pain, you can listen to my last CD. I, I've, been, right. went, I've been through diff, difficult things. I lost my uterus when I was 35. I haven't been able to be a mom. And all of that has shaped me, shaped me into the woman I am. And you process that into I process into that into music. I, I took pain and, and made it I transformed it into art. And and I think that's the best psychologist, the best therapist. Mm. And at the end, it gives you royalty. So <laughs> I'm key. grateful of any way you see it. Well, thanks so much, Erica. Thank you. For more from James, check out the James Altucher Show on the Choose Yourself Network at jamesaltucher.com and get yourself on the free insiders list today. Hey, thanks for listening. Listen, I have a big favor to ask you and it will only take 30 seconds or less. And it would mean a huge amount to me. If you like this podcast, please let me know. Please let the team I work with know. Please let my guests know. And you can do this easily by subscribing to the podcast. It's probably the biggest favor you could do for me right now. And it's really simple. Just go to iTunes, search for The James Altucher Show, and click subscribe. Again, it will only take you 30 seconds or less. And if you subscribe now, it will really help me out a lot. Thanks again. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud. Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing, and of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash advance. That's oracle.com slash advance. oracle.com slash advance.